welcome. You find me in Cumbria today and uh, in the city of Carlisle, which was founded by the Romans in the early AD 70s and is close to the modern Scottish border. From the early AD 70s, Carlisle's always been a major trading hub in the north of Britain. And today you'll still find lots of alleyways with lots of independent shops in them. Of course, like all cities, Carlisle has renewed itself and under these Victorian civic buildings lie the remains of the civil settlement which formed around Carlisle Fort of Lugvillium. It's believed the fort was named after the god Lugus, which was closely associated with the Roman god Mercury. The Romans liked to take uh, local gods and hybridise them with their own. So the fort's name itself just translates as strong through Lugus, or that's one of the interpretations that we have. St Cuthbert visited the city in 685 and was shown, it said, a working Roman fountain showing that some of the Roman city was actually still operating. Carlisle Cathedral was first founded by the Augustans in 1133 and despite the dissolution of the monasteries, fire, war, it still continues to be at the heart of the community. The magnificent Abbey Gateway was built in 1528, just a few years before the dissolution of the monasteries. I'd highly recommend visiting Carlisle Cathedral, it's packed with history. There are small donation boxes throughout the building so you can leave a little bit of money just to help the maintenance of the building and the work that it does. Once we're through the magnificent gateway we can turn on to Castle Street and maybe pop into Tully House Museum which uh, features a huge collection of Roman artefacts, also medieval, the Reavers and many other aspects of Carlisle life through the ages. Tully House actually sits over the southern half of the fort. The Roman road has still been marked out on the lawn using original gutter stones. Well, you join me in the moat of Carlisle Castle with the, uh, the drawbridge just behind me. Um, the castle itself was founded around about the 11th century by the Normans, of course. And uh, if I swing around on this side, there's a little bit of uh, wall there. This is actually part of the medieval castle and this is the curtain wall with, uh, with later brickwork on top of it. But uh, effectively the wall stands where the Roman fort of Lugvellium stood and uh, the first timbers for that fort have been dated around about AD 72 to 73. So we have a very good date for when the fort was founded and then the castle obviously built on the top of that. So we're just going to walk over the river today, we're going to go to Stanick, we're going to look at where the Vallum runs through this area where Hadrian's Wall left the fort. Uh, not a lot to see in terms of Roman remains but we can look at the site of where various uh, parts of the Roman monuments. That... It's very unusual to have two forts in close proximity. Lugvillium sits south of the River Eden and over the other side of the river we have Uxaledinum which sits on the large platform with Hadrian's Wall connecting at either side. The walk shouldn't take you very long up through the parkland and then up to the fort, maybe about half an afternoon. If you need refreshment then there's several pubs around Stanick and also the hotel which we'll see in the video. So below the grass in front of the castle lies the fort of Lugvillium, first founded in AD 72 of timber. It was abandoned for a time and then re-inhabited in the th early 3rd century. The first cavalry unit we know about are uh, cavalry units of Gauls, but other units would have served there as well, including detachments of the 2nd, 6th and 20th legions. Excavations have shown there are walls standing beneath the ground here, but a lot of the stone was robbed by the Normans to build their castle. Just a little bit of medieval recycling. The organic preservation in Carlisle is actually very good, equal almost to Vindolanda. Writing tablets, wood, shoes have all been found in excavations within the city. The walk takes us past the oldest parts of Carlisle Castle here, which has survived border raids, the Jacobite rebellions with Bonnie Prince Charlie. It's even formed a prison for Mary, Queen of Scots, when she came south. I'm sure there's some Roman stones built into this exterior wall as well. I bet there are. I'm just standing in uh, Bits Park, uh, Carlisle Castle just behind me. I'm just walking over to a, an interesting section of Hadrian's Wall, which uh, for a long time has been badly neglected but uh, recently some volunteers have come along and uh, cleaned and uh, recorded the area again so uh, I'm going to go over and take a look. It's the uh, stones 
that once formed the bridge that carried Hadrian's Wall over the River Eden and uh, they've been dredged out for, for a number of years and left in an enclosure which has been badly left to uh, overgrow so it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, when I get there but I'm, um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm starting this bit of walk on the Hadrian's Wall National Trail through the park. A quick diversion, just a few metres, actually takes you to the stones. Careful drawing and the analysis of the stones seem to indicate that uh, some of the stones were actually reused in a second bridge, recycled in effect. One stone actually has a mason's tally on it. Well, this is fantastic. I've just returned after a couple of years of uh, trying to explore this place and finding it overgrown each time and the volunteers have done an amazing job clearing all the stones, uh, very impressive. Uh, the stones here probably came from several or possibly even just one bridge crossing uh, the Eden carrying Hadrian's Wall and the, uh, the military way uh, onwards to Bonus and Solway and the uh, terminus of the wall. At this point I'm actually passing very close to where Hadrian's Wall would have crossed the River Eden would have seen quite a magnificent stone bridge carrying the wall and the military way. The military way in effect was the support road that serviced all the mile castles and forts. It's also important to note that the River Eden has shifted its course over the millennia. So this particular route we're walking on now may well have been underwater at one point, especially around the Roman period. As we start walking east, we get to notice the modern bridge that crosses the River Eden which pretty much lies on the same axis as the Roman bridge would have done. The bridge we're approaching now crossing the River Eden was built in 1815 and widened again in 1932 as the motor car took uh, hold. I love the stairs on the pedestrian side here and the wear of maybe a century of uh, feet on it. You can see the finger post for the Hadrian's Wall National Trail just below me, which goes under the bridge and carries on east or west, depending on which direction you're heading in. Having crossed the bridge, we now reach the corner of Brampton Road and the A7. And this is the parkland opposite. The Vallum ran through and below my feet and carried on heading on down to the River Eden. At this point in Rickaby Park, the Vallum line can be followed all the way to the start of the fort. Fantastic views overlooking the River Eden and the flood plains below it. You can almost imagine the cavalry watering their horses down there. The Vallum can't be seen at this point, but we cross over it and head over to the entrance to Rickaby Park and then it's a, a careful crossing of Brompton Road. In the Roman period, my view would have been the southwest corner tower of the fort with the fort dish in front of it, all sadly gone under tarmac now. One man's struggle with a park gate. There's an entrance somewhere here, I'm sure there is. A little bit of care needs to be taken crossing Brampton Road. It's a busy thoroughfare in from the villages west of Carlisle. Now we cross the line of the ramparts into the fort and the churchyard of St Michael's. This uh, particular church was built in 1841, but an earlier church has stood here since the time of uh, Henry I. Paths been cut through the overgrown churchyards, have been rewilded. Uh, you can follow the line of the rampart here. Not a lot to see, but uh, you uh, at least you can walk along what would have been the edge of the southern part of the fort. 
Keep a look out in the shady corners for monuments covered in ivy now. Quite a romantic churchyard in its, uh, in its way. The fort of Uxlenenum, or Petriana as it's also known, at its height could have held about a thousand cavalry and horses and would have had an extensive settlement surrounding it. It was first built in turf and then rebuilt in stone later. It also attached to Hadrian's Wall at either side. Although built in the 19th century, the church was built in the early English style by J. Hodgson. It's a beautiful place to be on a sunny day and on some benches just to rest your weary bones as you walk around this site. Other forts have shown activity after the Romans left, possibly monastic, so the site of worship could go back a long way here. As we pass the primary school grounds, the granaries of the fort were discovered just underneath the tarmac. I actually found myself in the village during the Scarecrow Festival. Also, it's the Queen's Jubilee, so everything's very patriotically painted at the moment, very colourful. Little excavation has been done in the centre of the village, and this is where the headquarters building must have stood, the senior officers' quarters, the barracks, all must have lain in this section here. Although the creation of the village must have swept a lot of the fort away, I can't help think that uh, below the surface here there must be interesting remains still to be found. Swinging round the corner onto Mulcaster Crescent, I actually come across Freddie Mercury. Quite a strange thing to come across in a residential street north of Garlisle. The fort platform falls away quite sharply to the north, so the Romans would have had an excellent view from the walls of the territory to the north of Hadrian's Wall. We now take a left-hand turn and we end up in the Cumbria Park Hotel car park. Apart from losing kings in car parks, you can also find remains of forts, or at least the uh, remains of the walls marked out in tiles on the floor. In this case, the northwest wall of the fort. Excavation revealed just a few courses of the fort wall still standing. Uh, where the statue stands on the information board is actually inside the fort. The modern statue is available at all good garden centres. If you're keen-eyed just outside the hotel, you'll see a small blue plaque just marking the fort site. The hotel has a small public bar, so you can pop in, slake your first, and also there are some stones left over from the excavation. Not in their original location, but they are Roman stones. So there is something to look at in Stanek. Something on the corner of Church Terrace in the main um, road out of um, Carlisle and uh, this was the line of the Roman road as well so uh, it's always been a busy place maybe a little bit busier today this end, uh, end house has a small plaque on the side which actually marks where Hadrian's wall left the fort of Uxaledinum and carried on heading over towards Bowness on Solway and uh, the first fort on Hadrian's wall Now walking down the busy A7 back to Carlisle, behind me where the uh, line of Hadrian's Wall would have run, in the Roman period there would have been a monumental gate perhaps through the wall as the uh, road headed north, uh, equal to maybe the port gate at uh, Corbridge or just north of Corbridge. So walking back into uh, Roman Carlisle at Villiam I probably would have seen uh, roadside stalls, a little bit of commercial activity before the bridge. And I'm heading now down to the Roman bathhouse site. So of course, just a quick reminder of the Roman system. There was the North Ditch, Hadrian's Wall, and then behind that, the Vallum Ditch and Earthworks, which formed the southern part of the military zone. 
The vellum itself has long gone, but it's uh, crossed here between these two houses and this rather large house over here on the left hand side. Just coming up is a mound of soil, so I don't know if that's the last Roman diggers still finishing their section of the earthwork or something a little bit more modern, which I suspect it probably is. This rather lonesome sandstone block marks the line of Hadrian's Wall as it descends down towards the Eden. On the bank of the river was Mile Castle 66, which was noted by antiquarians but has long since gone. So we found ourselves at Carlisle Cricket Club, which was the uh, site of a major excavation in September 2021 to uncover the bathhouse dated to the Severan period, which is the early third century. The site has now been completely backfilled and the archaeology is roughly about two to three metres below my feet. It was an impressive site at the time. The uh, hypercost heating system, the collapsed roof and many other buildings were discovered on site, including robbed out medieval pits, these beautiful imperial stamped tiles. The cricket club now have plans to build on the site and it'll be used again for some other purpose. The archaeology has been fully recorded and maybe digs will take place in the future, but not for a number of years, I don't think. I was on site for a few weeks during the dig, helping out with the finds tent, doing some guided walks. It seems strange and rather odd now to see it all backfilled again. Just on this section here, a rather marvellous Roman road was uncovered, which may have led to Milecastle 66. Further work will be needed, though. I'm just here at uh, Carlisle Cricket Ground, watching a match. So there's been combat going on here a long time, only it's a little bit more friendly than it used to be in uh, first century Britain. The vellum would have run through the uh, ground and then through the cricket pavilion. Uh, Hadrian's Wall uh, ran slightly um, further over. Um, and reaching Mile Castle 66 on the edge of the river, uh, which is now long gone. So it's just a matter of retracing our steps back into Carlisle. I hope you've enjoyed this little virtual walk, and if you'd like to like and subscribe, it helps me create more content. If you have time, why not call into Bookcase Bookshop and purchase a copy of Agent's Wall, A Journey Through Time, a book I co-authored with David Breeze and Mark Richards.